Does Mission Kandahar suck? Now, if you guys are confused, Mission Kandahar is the name of this movie in Canada, while Kandahar is just the title in America. So if you guys are confused at what movie I'm actually talking about, they're the same movie. But the question still remains, does this movie suck? I'll be honest, I have no notes for this review. I just saw it, and I'm going in completely blind, completely fresh. I'm just going to shoot from the hip. And no, that's not a reference to this movie being about, you know, Al-Qaeda and AK-47s and all that jazz. I'm just going to speak from the heart on this one. But the question still remains, does this movie suck? So, intro out of the way. Hey guys, my name is Brandon, aka The Brando Critic. Thank you guys so much for being here today. I'm going to try to do... (laughs) Little, little to no edits in this review. We're going to see if we can do it in one take, which I don't think I've actually ever done before. I've always had a couple of edits, but moving on. I want to say thank you so much for being here because every single one of you guys who clicks on one of my videos, you guys are rock stars. Thank you guys so much. But I just saw Mission Kandahar, and it is a few days early, and I'm here to tell you if it sucks or not. But before I get into my thoughts, let me know what you think of the movie down in the comment section down below. Are you guys excited for it? Are you guys big fans of Gerard Butler movies? Are you guys a big fan of those Olympus Has Fallen movies? I've only seen the first one of those, but... The director of this one actually directed Angel Has Fallen, according to IMDb. But whatever your thoughts are on this movie, are you guys excited for it? Let me know down in the comment section down below. And make sure you guys stick around to the end of the video so you guys know my rating of the film. Or else you might be going to a film that might not be right for you. So of course I go, that. let's get started. Do the clap, the classic Brando Critic clap. And then I go into, of course, the director, which is, I have it up here, Rick Roman Waugh. And he has done like Greenland and Angel Has Fallen. He has worked with Gerard Butler many times before. And of course, it stars Gerard Butler. And I believe it's Naveed Negabon. He is the other lead actor in this movie. And basically, the overall gist of the story is that Gerard Butler, Tom Harris, works for the CIA and he does a mission. They blow up a nuclear facility in Iran, and he is basically exposed. And everyone knows who he is. So you have the Pakistani government, you have Al-Qaeda, you have ISIS, you have Taliban, you have all these different groups all after him. And if I, you know, said the wrong group here and there, I apologize. You know, this movie kind of blends together, and I'll get into that in a little bit. But him and Naveed Negaban, his character... They have to get to Kandahar to escape, basically, because everyone is after them. So what are my thoughts on this movie? Well, I saw the trailer for this movie, and it actually looked pretty interesting. And I actually like that premise. I think, you know, two people whose, you know, secret identities are now made public, and a lot of other big, powerful people are after them, but they got to get to a certain location. Like, this is pure video game level uh, stuff, right? Get to point A to point B and survive. And it's the perfect premise for an action movie or for a thriller or for a pretty intense movie. You know, like we, I remember back in like the 2000s, like late 2000s, early 2010s, we had a lot of, uh, there's a lot of dust in here. But anyways, there was a lot of Middle Eastern movies, right? You had Body of Lies, you had Zero Dark Thirty, you had The Hurt Locker, you had, you know, a lot of different movies. I guess Lone Survivor was a bit later on, I believe that was 20. 14? I could be wrong on that. But either way, there was a lot of Middle Eastern movies, war movies, crime, or not crime, but like, you know, action, thriller, that kind of movie. So I was looking at this movie and I'm going, well, you know what? It's been a while since I've seen one of these. Um, I And there's one that came out last year uh, with Jessica Chastain and, oh my God, Ray Fiennes. And I'm blanking on the name of it right now, but I actually enjoyed it. <laughs> Maybe not so much because I couldn't remember the name. But I was looking at this movie and I'm going, you know what, I should give it a chance. But I gotta be honest, this movie commits the biggest sin any movie can make. It's boring. Give me a movie that is poorly shot, poorly acted, where the story doesn't make any sense, the effects are just terrible, the editing is choppy, the pacing is all over the place. If it's bad, fine. But don't give me boring. I can watch a bad movie, but as long as it's, like, entertaining or I'm, like, just laughing at how awful it is, at least it's a memorable experience. This movie is just, it's just bland. And it's a shame because I do think that you can have a good movie in here, just if the basics were really covered. Because, you know, our two main characters don't really meet each other until, like, 40 minutes into the movie. 
and their relationship, I do think could have been a good relationship. But when there was a big action scene going on and they're talking about how they got to get home to their families and, you know, we got to remember what we're fighting for and all those platitudes that you know in a movie like this. And it's like, well, we got to, you know, get back to your daughter and that kind of stuff, right? I'm thinking this just feels so empty. I don't know these characters. So why do I care? And, you know, I think N Naveed Negaban. I thought he was actually really good in the movie. You know, when he was talking about how he lost his son and how he wants to get his wife's sister back, he actually does have a lot of emotion. And I could have watched an entire story about him. You know, a man's struggle to, you know, fight for the ones that he loves. You know, that's a story that all of us can really get behind. So I really liked his character in the movie. And I think we could have had a really good story about him. But Gerard Butler, he is just, you know, the white guy in it. And he doesn't have any charm, he doesn't have any charisma, he doesn't have any spunk, not, nor, nor no energy, really. Uh, no likability. And I'm, I'm not every movie needs to have Chris Pratt in Guardians of the Galaxy as the main character. I'm not saying that at all. But there's no... Why do I care about this character? Why do I want to see him succeed? I don't. I don't really care about him at all. And when all these things are happening, it's... It's so, they don't tell it in a very memorable way. Like Zero Dark Thirty, there was some energy to it. Even though it was a slow-paced movie, you could really feel the weight of what was going to happen, right? The fight for, or the hunt for Osama Bin Laden in the Hurt Locker, right? Like everyone remembers that original bomb scene, right? It's memorable. This movie doesn't really have anything memorable in it. Now, there are some action sequences that were, you know, serviceable and are exciting. But I can name, you know, countless movies with serviceable action scenes that are way more memorable than this movie. And it just feels like all of the platitudes that we get about family and culture. Like, this movie really talks about how, you know, Afghanistan has changed since the Taliban took back over. And I just don't really think it leads anywhere. And I'm totally fine with a movie about that. It's just that, you know, there is no center piece to the movie that you can really get connected to. And that's the shame because, like I said earlier, I think that this movie does have a plot that could work. Two characters are abandoned. No one's coming to save them. They have to get to a certain city. And they're in a very dangerous place. And lots of people are out, are out to get them standard basic action film plot that could totally work and even if it's not a complete like you know shoot 'em up action movie you can have some more espionage and more of a thriller type of atmosphere but we'd want to know you know all the players at play i don't really understand the villains I don't really get to know them. And that's why I said, like, I, it, it is kind of hard to know if it's, like, ta I know it's the Taliban because you see, you know, the Taliban leaders in there. But they're talking about Al-Qaeda and um, a different faction of ISIS. And then you have, like, this one agent for uh, the Pakistani government. And, of course, they want him to sell, you know, Tom Harris and uh, Naveed Negabon's character. I didn't write it down, so I apologize that one. Mo, that's his name. Um, they want to sell these two characters on the open market because, of course, they're wanted fugitives. That, that, that all works, but I need to care about who our main characters are, and I need to know who's trying to stop them. If none of those are really in this movie, then you're just watching a bunch of characters talk and move and do things. Like, that's the thing. It just feels like fluff, and it's boring. Like, that's the cardinal sin of this movie. So, when I'm thinking about rating this movie, I, I, I can't say that it's terrible. Like, I'm not cringing at the screen. I'm not going, oh my god, this doesn't make any sense. Like, this is so stupid. Just nothing happens. So, does that make it a one? You know, when I say it's not for me? Or is that a two? Like, it's okay because there are some you know, elements in it that if you just move around and tinker, it's like trying to fit two puzzle pieces that, you know, obviously don't fit together. And you're just trying to jam it in there and it feels forced and it doesn't quite fit right. And you're looking at it and it looks kind of ugly. So, you know what? I'll, I'll give the movie the benefit of the doubt. You know, oh, there's my phone. See, no edits. I'll give the movie the benefit of, a, a benefit of the doubt. I'm getting there. I got there. And say that, you know, it's competently made. And there are some exciting scenes. And there's some intrigue there. But it just really didn't hit the mark. It's... 
I don't want to say it fell flat on its face, but it's like a good analogy is like you're going to the Olympics and you see like this long jump guy and you the starting line's here and the finish line's here. And, you know, they do this wonderful build up and they jump and they just go. And it's like, well, that was kind of disappointing. So for my overall rating, I'm going to give it a two out of five. It's okay. I'm never going to watch this movie again. It's very boring. Yes, it does commit the biggest sin a movie can make, which is that it's boring. And I'm just going to move on with my life. Like, that's the thing. When watching these movies, it's just so hard to, you know, muster up the energy to sit down in front of your camera and say, this is what the movie is. So that's why I thought, you know what, let's just not do any script for this one. And, and let me know, guys. Do you guys like these kind of off-the-cuff reviews? If you do, let me know. I'll do more of them. But... That's basically my review, guys. So if you liked it, hit like, hit subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this. And of course, I got to plug in my Patreon. And I'll be honest, guys, I edit the crap out of this, this portion of the video because I always stutter. But the reasons why I believe you should join Patreon is that, number one, you get to support the channel. Number two, we do monthly watch-alongs. So we all pick a movie, we watch it, we discuss it. They're a lot of fun. And every single watch-along, I give you guys giveaways prizes, contests for new movies. Sometimes I give you guys posters, a lot of cool things. So if that interests you and you want to join a really tight knit group of community cinephiles, then Patreon is in the link down below. So I really appreciate that. I can't believe I actually got through that without stuttering. Just take your time, breathe. I, I feel like whenever I do those kind of videos, I got to try to like, hey guys, I don't think this movie really warrants that. So those are my thoughts on Mission Kandahar. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.